Back when I was in my early 20s, I really started to explore my interests in music, film, and literature. And anyone who knows me knows that when I get into something, I really get into it. So when I began to develop an interest in the Fab Four, I found out everything there was to know about them. I listened to every single one of their albums repeatedly. I watched all their films. I read books about them. I bought Beatles clothing. I even collected photos of them for our walls. It was the same thing with The Master of Suspense. I ripped through all of his movies, including all seven seasons of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. It was no different when it came to The Queen of Crime. I binged her books, collecting as many as I could, including film and TV adaptations of her work. And I was super pumped to go and see Murder on the Orient Express in the theater last fall. But all of these British creative geniuses, all of their bodies of work are complete. There's no more Beatles records for me to listen to. There's no more Hitchcock films for me to see and analyze. And there's no more Agatha Christie whodunits for me to puzzle over. The only thing I could do is reflect on these wonderful things they created in the past. But then, a few months ago, I was walking through chapters and I saw a new Agatha Christie book on the shelf. A new one! I couldn't believe it! I mean, she's been dead for over 40 years. How can she have a new book out? Well, it turns out, Sophie Hanna, a British poet and novelist, decided to revive Christie's most popular detective series. I was beyond thrilled. And I think, my fellow Euler fans, you can relate to the feeling I had that day. See, the Oilers had a dream team back in the 1980s with the boys on the bus. Wayne, Mark, and the rest of the guys won four cups in five years. But as the Oilers have struggled through the last several years, it seemed that all of their greatest accomplishments were just going to be in the past. But then the Oilers won the draft lottery and the right to select Connor McDavid first overall in 2015 with a team that already included Hall, Eberle, Nugent Hopkins and Dreisaitl. We all thought the glory years are back. And then Peter Shirelli showed up. Oh, man. Now, he had overseen a very competitive Bruins team for a number of years. They won a Stanley Cup, they won a President's Trophy, and they even lost in the final during his time there. Most of the comments that I heard about his shortcomings, I chalked up to him having overstayed his welcome in Boston. Now, I've made a lot of videos about him before, and you can go back and watch those to see my earlier thoughts on him. But today, in true Agatha Christie fashion, I am going to present to you undeniable proof that Peter Shirelli is guilty of killing the Edmonton Oilers' Stanley Cup chances in the Connor McDavid era so far, and why he should hang for it. I'm just kidding about that last part. They just need to fire him. I'm actually going to start by condemning the situation that Shirelli inherited. The previous regime did nothing with years of high draft picks. Just look at the 2007 to 2014 drafts. It's astonishing the lack of NHL players considering where the team picked. The defense and goaltending was also the worst in the league at the time of his hiring. Also, it is important to remember that the Oilers draft lottery win was still fresh in everyone's minds. Just think about how upset some of the fans of other teams were that the Oilers won the Connor McDavid sweepstakes. Imagine how upset the GMs of those teams were. Do you think anyone was interested in making a fair deal with Edmonton? Not to mention the anger, frustration, and embarrassment of Oiler fans. I've heard some fans say that Peter Shirelli could have come in and literally done nothing, and the team would have turned around. Well, first of all, there's no way of knowing that. And secondly, at that time, that was just not an option. No one was in the mood to sit around and wait after nine years out of the playoffs. 
they already had done nothing for years and they still had enormous holes on defense and in goal that needed to be addressed immediately if they were going to ice a competitive team. Now, having said all that, here's the thing about Peter Shirelli. He doesn't have a clue how to negotiate. Let's start at the beginning. Despite having good intentions, he threw away two draft picks in the deepest NHL draft in 12 years. They never would have had Barzal even if they kept the pick, and contrary to the popular narrative, Mitchell Stevens was the player selected with their other pick. But that aside, they would have had one of Connor, Shabbat, Eric Sinek, White, Samsonov, Besser, Konechny, or Roslovic had they not made that particular deal. He traded for Korpakoski and Griba that weekend as well, which is fine, except for the fact that he would go on to buy out both of those players later on, throwing away valuable cap dollars. Now, many feel the Taylor Hall trade was one of the worst NHL trades of the last 10 years, but I have well-documented thoughts on everything going on there, and I'm happy to debate the ins and outs of this transaction. But the bottom line today is that he didn't get enough value for Hall. He also signed Milan Lucic for too long and for too much. With fighting basically being abolished from the game, Lucic has become the NHL's version of Steve and Doug Butabi. Can't find a dance partner and certainly isn't scoring. But Shirelli's inability to broker proper deals really amped up after the Oilers had some success. He bought out Benoit Pouliot, which again, it's fine to move on from the player. But you shouldn't have to shoot yourself in the foot to do it. He inexplicably gave Zach Cassian $1.9 million a year for three years. Cass has two goals and three points this season. Stop me if you've heard this before, but he gave Chris Russell too much money and too much term. He salary dumped Eberle out of fear that someone else would offer Sheet Dreisaitl for too much money, and then he himself proceeded to sign Dreisaitl for too much money. There are plenty more transactions that I could mention, but I think you get the picture. I don't know why, he struggles so much with signing and trading assets. Maybe he doesn't own a calculator or no one has told him there's a salary cap. But ignorance of the law is no excuse. Peter Shirelli himself once said, the Oilers are suffering from death by a thousand cuts. He's right. He's the one holding the knife. They should have fired him yesterday morning before he made those two trades to try and stay afloat while three of his top five defensemen are out. If Bob Nicholson removes him, they have a chance to stop the bleeding and make the Connor McDavid Oilers what they should be. And he might as well fire Kevin Lowe and Craig McTavish while he's at it because they are willing accomplices in this crime against hockey humanity. Let me know your thoughts below. Have a happy new year.